All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this ASUS V500C. All right, so first thing we're going to do is use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. I'm going to have to go get the handle for my screwdriver, so let me do that and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. So let's go ahead and remove all the screws. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way you do that, put them flat side down like that on your desk in the pattern you remove them. All right, so you can see we got four going along the back where the hinges are. Then we got one on either side, and then we got another four um, towards the front. Again, the screws are different size, shape, and length, so it's always a good idea to keep them in order. Even if they look the same, it's always good to try and keep them in order just in case you don't want to mix up the screws, put the wrong one in the wrong place, and end up damaging something, all right? Currently, these two look the same. The two on the outer corners look the same. These two look the same. And by that, I mean, like, pairs. Um, they're, these, these are different. All three of these are different, okay? So again, it's always a good idea to keep them all in order just in case, all right? So my camera's having a hard time focusing because it's all just like one solid color, right? Looks like all the four across the front or the bottom or whatever you want to call this are the same, okay? We're going to try to pop the bottom cover off using a suction cup, but most likely I'm going to just use my fingernails and pop it out. All right, as you can see, it doesn't want to just pop out easily. So what we're going to do after removing all the screws, we're going to carefully open the screen. Okay, this laptop right now is just booting to the BIOS. So I'm pretty sure like 99.99% sure the hard drive is dead. I do have ways I can test it, but I'm pretty sure because it's not even detecting it in the BIOS. Um, it could be a loose plug or something, but I doubt it. All right, so what we're going to do, as you can see, we are going to go in the gap here. Okay, and usually I'll try and push from the bottom here. And as you can see, the bottom cover came out really easily. Okay, so what we're going to do now that we got that, we're going to go to this side, same thing. Fingernails in, push on the bottom. You can use plastic pry tools. You don't have to use fingernails. Of course, like people are going to be telling me that they're going to have to wait for their fingernails to grow to do this. Um, you can use plastic pry tools, but um, I mean, if you order plastic pry tools, it's going to take a while for those to arrive too. I mean, I guess Amazon you can get in one, one or two days. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're going to go ahead and work our way down the side here. So for some reason, this side is a lot more difficult to pop up. Oh, actually, no, I was just not pushing pressure on the bottom properly. Okay. And this edge is being a little bit tricky as well. Okay. But, um, it is coming out for the most part. This side is a little more stubborn. So let's see if we can continue working from this side. Okay. So we got all of this up all the way down to here. And then usually to get the back side, you kind of have to like wiggle and pull it a little. Okay. But let's see. All right. So here it's kind of being stubborn. All right. It doesn't want to come out at this, at these middle pieces here. So let's see what we can do. Maybe push with your thumb down and like this. Yep, that seems to be working. So basically what I'm doing is I'm flexing the cover in like this. So the clips that stick out this way are getting pulled out. All right. And that's what you do. Okay. And sometimes using a suction cup helps with this. Okay. But uh, let's go ahead and continue going along and see if we can pop the rest out. Okay. So we got most of it. Let's see if we can use a suction cup here to help. And that kind of helped at least with the back one, but the clips right here for some reason really don't want to come out. Okay, so you can see the suction cup is helping quite a bit, but for some reason there's a clip just right there that doesn't want to come out. We got all the rest out. You can see it's kind of lifting here. Okay, so maybe we can wiggle this out somehow. I don't know why it's stuck there. Very strange. Okay. I don't know what's going on with that, just that one spot. There we go. And there, we got the bottom cover off. It is a little dusty in here, but nothing too crazy. Um, since I have it open, I might as well clean it up. I don't know if you can see, I wiped it with my finger, and you can see where there's dust and where I wiped it. All right. And as you can see, the hard drive definitely didn't move anywhere. All right, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the internals. I'm going to zoom in a bit. 
All right, so you have a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. There's four screws holding it. Then you can slide this back and pull it out. We will take that out eventually. There's only one stick of RAM. The other is soldered to the motherboard. Just pull these two tabs to the side to lift it out. And then it pops up and you can take it out like that. Um, problem with this is I don't know what type of RAM this is. Does this sleeve come out and have the label underneath? Um, nope, <laughs> it's not sticking to the RAM, but there's no label there. Um, all I can tell you is this looks like DDR3 RAM, I think. I don't think this is DDR4. Let me see. I got some RAM over here. Let me see if I can compare it for you. Give me a second. Okay. And this is DDR3 as well. Okay, so this is DDR3 RAM, and I'm going to compare, and yes, this is DDR3. All right, so, yep, you got PC3. I don't know what speed the RAM is, um, but usually you can use any DDR3. Sometimes there might be conflicts with the speed. If there are, keep that in mind. Um, it could just be you need to get a different speed. All right, let's see, what else do we got? We got the connector here. I think this is for a speaker. Huh. Yeah, okay, that's for the speaker. It runs along here and connects the speaker there. Then you got the wire at the bottom from that speaker going all the way along to the other speaker over here. Right, you got this um, connector for the LED lights, which plugs in up here. Okay, BIOS, CMOS, RTC, real-time clock battery here. This battery connector, you just pop up from here. All right, it's just you just pull it up just like that. All right, I'm going to pop that back in. The BIOS battery, I don't want to remove. Well, actually, I guess his BIOS is kind of reset. But basically what you do, you just get like a small tool. It doesn't matter if it's conductive or anything. Um, but it should fit in this gap. You push it in and pop it out just like that. Okay, you want to actually be careful because it can damage something on the motherboard. So I would recommend actually putting your finger over here. All right, don't do what I did earlier. And then you can kind of push it and lift it out just like that. Okay, all right, luckily it didn't land anywhere dangerous, it didn't seem, so yeah. Anyways, you got the wireless card here, two wireless antennas. To pop these out, you pull up from the tails, and that's another reason why usually I don't show everything, like I don't take everything out because there are risks like that, all right? Even if you've been doing this a long time, sometimes you forget stuff and you might mess something up. You got the fan here, this connector, grab the wings and you kind of just wiggle to pull it out. All right, again, I'm gonna leave that in there. Um, see, this is the CPU or uh, processor. Under here, it is soldered to the motherboard, so you can't remove that. Under here, let's see, can I, okay. Um, under here, you got the connectors. You got the LCD LVDS connector right here. If you're gonna remove that, make sure to disconnect the battery, open up the laptop, and press and hold the power button for 15 seconds to make it safer to work on. You have this connector here, which I'm pretty sure is the keyboard connector. All right, then you got this connector going across for the two USB ports um, and the headphone jack, as well as the SD card reader. Okay, there's not much else in here. You got this connector here as well for, I'm pretty sure this is for the touchpad or trackpad. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and replace the hard drive with the SSD. Um, and then we are going to... <clears throat> And then after that, we're going to, um, what do you call it? clean the dust out. All right. And after we've done that, of course, then we're going to install Windows onto it. And that's pretty straightforward. I was actually testing the SSD earlier, so it does have some partitions created. Um, so I'll wipe that out as well. But anyways, we'll grab this, slide that back just like this. Okay. And you can see there's four screws holding this bracket into place. We're going to transfer that over to the new hard drive. And here you can actually see better the keyboard um, connector, how it's connected. Okay. And sorry, I'm actually doing this off camera because it's, uh, I don't want to have to readjust everything. But let's go ahead and get these four screws out. Okay. So we're going to get all four. All right, now that we got all four screws out, we can actually slide this off. Um, this hard drive has a plastic thing on it. If you're replacing your hard drive with another hard drive, um, you might want to transfer this plastic over, though it shouldn't be a problem because there's not really anything in there that's going to damage it. SSDs, you don't have to worry because there's no circuitry um, open. Okay, so you don't have to worry about anything getting onto the board. 
But again, if you want, if you're putting another spinning hard drive, I don't know why you would, but if you are, um, you can transfer over that plastic that's on the back of the hard drive. Um, again, SSDs make a huge difference, so I wouldn't recommend putting a regular spinning hard drive um, unless you just really want a lot of storage. Um, but if that's the case, I would recommend getting a smaller SSD and then um, <clears throat> getting an external with a whole bunch of storage if you really want that. Okay, so let's go ahead and tighten all four of these screws in completely. Okay, make sure you tighten it so that it doesn't untwist on its own. It should hold pretty strong. Okay, just like that. And then what you do, just get this, line it back up, slide that into place. Good. And we'll put the other four screws back in. And that's pretty simple. That's pretty much it. I am going to clean the dust out again. So we'll get all this. And then we'll go through installing windows. All right. Okay. And then also you can set aside this old hard drive. So this one, this one, their hard drive actually failed. It's just booting directly to Windows, so we're basically just completely replacing it. Or, yeah. Alright, so we'll store the old hard drive in there, and we'll hand that back to them. Alright, oops, I think I mixed up the packaging from another, another one, so I'll get the right packaging later. Alright, anyways, let me clean the dust out of here, and we'll be back. Alright, so for now we'll just, I guess, take a thumbnail here with the new SSD. Okay, maybe like that. Okay, and I'll clean the dust out and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back. We clean the dust off. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner. All right, clean the dust out of the fan. So now we're just gonna put the cover back on. Very uh, simple, okay? Just get it lined up. And we're just gonna snap everything back down. Okay, very simple. All right, make sure everything's lined up when you do this. Okay, all right, good, and then we're just going to get all the screws back in. All right, that's pretty much it. After that, we are going to boot from the um, Windows Boot USB. If you're wondering how to do that, normally it will actually boot itself, okay? So keep that in mind, it'll actually boot itself normally. I think they, did they use a different screw? So they put two different screws here, actually. One's like black and one's like a lighter color. But anyways, we're going to boot from the USB and then we will, um, yeah, install Windows. But that's pretty much all there is to this. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and it allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, that's all there is to it. Um, if you're wondering how to boot from your USB if it doesn't automatically do it, which it, it should it, because it's not going to detect a bootable device, um, but you would press F2 or delete and then you would go into the BIOS and select the USB. Let me see if I can show you that. So I'm going to plug in the USB here. Let me see if I can go to the BIOS to show it. Power this up. F2 delete, F2 delete. Okay, you can see we're in the BIOS now. What you do is you go to the, oops, save or exit all the way to the right, and here you see boot override, and then you can select the USB drive. So I'm gonna select the USB drive, not that Windows thingy. Uh, my Windows uh, USB has 64-bit and 32-bit, that's why it showed two options. So I picked the 32, or the 64-bit option. But other than that, that's all there is to it. Um, then you just install Windows like normal. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.